When the Moon Split, a biography of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Compiled by Safiur Rahman Mubarakpuri. Part 3. A Hiatus. After Jibril first appeared before Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, at the cave of Hira, a long time passed without any further revelation. A distressed Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, feared Allah had abandoned him. Why had his Lord deserted him? In moments of despair, he would want to throw himself off a mountain, but then he would sense Jibril's presence and become calm again. This interim period was a time of contemplation, a time for Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him to prepare himself for what lay ahead. One day Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him returned to the cave of Hira to worship in solitude. As he left the cave and began to descend the mountain, another strange event took place. The Prophet peace and blessings be upon him described the event as follows. When I descended the mountain and came to the valley, I heard a voice saying, Muhammad, you are the Prophet of Allah, and I am Jibril. Then I raised my head and on the horizon, I saw the angel who had come to me in the cave of Hira. I was filled with awe and bowed towards the earth, I hurried home to Khadija and asked her to wrap me up, she put a blanket around me and sprinkled water on me. It was at this time that the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him received the second revelation. It comprised the first five verses of Surah al muddathir O oh, you wrapped in garments, arise and warn, magnify your Lord, and your clothing purify, shun idols and false worship, and give not a thing in order to have more, or consider not your deeds of obedience to Allah as a favor to Him. Then be patient for the sake of your Lord, i.e. perform your duty to Allah. 74, 1-7 this revelation with its instructions regarding worship came before Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him was instructed to perform regular prayers salah. It marked the resumption of visitations by Jibril, and subsequent revelations came in quick succession. Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him had been appointed as a prophet with the first revelation. With the second revelation, he was made Allah's messenger, entrusted with two tasks. The first task was to arise and warn. He was ordered to teach his people about Allah and to warn them about the consequences of their sins. The Prophet's second task was to obey the commands of Allah and act as a model for others. The surah contains a series of instructions to the Prophet and a line-by-line -line examination reveals the basic religious practices ordered in Islam. In the original Arabic, the phrase far kabir in the first verse means Worship Allah alone without associating any partners with Him. In the second verse, the expression Thiyabaka Fatahir literally means, purify your clothing, but according to Muslim scholars, it also means, purify your conduct. The next verse, Wa al Raja Foja enjoins the Prophet to abstain from the pagan customs of the Arabs. The verse La Tamwin Tastakthir means, do not expect to be rewarded in this world for your efforts. Finally, wa lirabaka fasbir means, be patient for your Lord's sake. The mission begins. Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, accepted his duties as prophet and messenger with resolute obedience. He answered his Lord's call by inviting members of his household to worship Allah in keeping with his commandments. They were to be Muslims, those who had surrendered to Allah, and their religion was Islam, the religion of peace. However, the Prophet's compatriots were a rough people accustomed to settling the disputes with swords. They clung to idol worship because it had been the practice of their ancestors who had strayed far from the pure monotheism of Ibrahim and Ismail. Sensing their antagonism, the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him began to quietly teach those closest to him, those whose hearts he felt would be open to the truth. The First Believers Khadija was the first person to believe her husband had been chosen as Allah's messenger and prophet. As his wife, she knew more than anyone else did that Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him was no ordinary man, his sublime character and innate morality set him apart from those he lived among. She had heard talk about Allah's final prophet who was yet to appear. She had also heard about some of the strange and miraculous events that others had witnessed. Concerning Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him furthermore, she had heard Waraka say that the angel who had come to the cave of Hira was none other than Jibril, 
and that this angel had brought Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him, a revelation from Allah. Lastly, she was present at the moment Surah al muddathir was revealed. It was therefore only natural that she was the first to believe in Muhammad and his appointment as Allah H's final messenger. Abu Bakr was also among the first people to become Muslim. When the verses of al muddathir were revealed, the Prophet went to Abu Bakr, who was a leading Meccan trader and a prominent figure in his own right, and told him what had happened. Two years younger than the Prophet, he was thoroughly familiar with his friend's character and the reputation he enjoyed in the community for truthfulness. Abu Bakr did not doubt Muhammad's declaration of his prophethood, just as he did not refuse his invitation to Islam. With his declaration of faith, he became one of the first Muslims. Ali bin Abu Talib was only a child when the Prophet's mission began, and some sources indicate that he was 10 years old when he became Muslim. He was living under the Prophet's guardianship since his father, Abu Talib, was unable to provide for all his children. Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was like a second father to the boy, who believed without a doubt that his guardian was indeed a prophet, and that he had brought the truth. Among the first to accept the faith was also the Prophet's freedman, Zayd bin Harith bin Sharabil Kalbi. Sold into slavery in the pre-Islamic era, Zayd had refused to leave the Prophet when his relatives tried to buy his freedom. For a while he was known as Zayd bin Muhammad, but following the prohibition of giving adopted children the names of their foster parents, he was referred by his actual name as mentioned above. To notwithstanding the change of name, Zaid's love for the Prophet was deep and the bond between the two was enduring. These four Khadija, Abu Bakr, Ali, and Zaid accepted Islam the same day the opening verses of Surah al muddathir were revealed. Some sources hold that they accepted Islam in the same order as given above. Life changed for the new Muslims who desired to reform the religious practice of their families and friends. After his conversion, Abu Bakr began to encourage others to abandon idol worship and follow Allah's messenger. A well-respected merchant, known for his generosity and intelligence, Abu Bakr was the foremost authority on Arab genealogy. His reputation and his character ensured that people gravitated to him, and if he deemed a person was sincere in finding the truth, he would talk to him about his new faith. Many people were interested in what he told them about Islam, and they went with him to the Prophet. Among those who became Muslim in this way were Uthman bin Afanamwi, Zubayr bin Awam Asadi, Abdul Rahman bin Auf Suri, Saad bin Abi Waqas Suri, and Tala bin Ubaidullah Taimi. Many others from the Quraysh later became Muslims. Abu Ubaidah Amir bin Jarrah, Abu Salamar bin Abdul Asad and his wife. Um Salamar, Arkham bin Abul Arkham, Uthman bin Madan and his brothers Kardam bin Mad, Un and Abdullah bin Madan. Ubaidah bin Harith bin Muttalib bin Abdu Munaf, Sa'id bin Zaid bin Amra bin Nafal and his wife the sister of Umar. Fatima bin Katab, Kabab bin Arat, Jafar bin Abi Talib and his wife, Asma bin Umayz, Khalid bin Sa'id bin Az and his wife, Amina bin Kalaf, his brother, Amra bin Sa'id bin Az, Hatab bin Harith and his wife, Fatima bin Muhalal, his brother, Katab bin Harith, his wife, Fakiha bin Yazir, and his other brother, Mu'amma bin Harith, Muttalib bin Azar and his wife, Ramla bin Abi Alf, and Naim bin Abdullah bin Naim. More believers came from other tribes to embrace Islam. Abdullah bin Masad Hadli, Masad bin Rabi al Kari, Abdullah bin Jash and his brother, Abu Ahad bin Jash, Suhaid bin Sanar Rumi, Amar bin Yazir Ansi and his parents, Yazir and Sumaya, and Amir bin Fuhira. Amam and Barakar, the Prophet's father's Abyssinian slave who had looked after the Prophet during his childhood, also became Muslim, as did Umul Fadal Lababatul Kubra bin Tarith Hilalia and Asmar bint Abu Bakr Siddiq. These and others who embraced Islam in the early days of Islam are called the earliest believers. Scholars put their number at 130, but the exact time of the declaration of faith cannot be determined. Such a list includes those companions also who embraced Islam after the Prophet began preaching his message openly. Worship and Training of the Believers Despite the long gap between the first and second revelations, subsequent revelations came in quick succession after Surah al-Mudathir. 
The next surah to be revealed was Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah al here was not a set of instructions for the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him alone. Its message was explicit for the believers as well. In its verses they were given a set of rules to live by, rules that still bind Muslims to the laws of Allah. The surah teaches the believers how to praise and invoke Allah, some of whose principal attributes are also mentioned in the verses. We learn through it that each person will reap what good or bad he sows in this world, and that he will receive the recompense for it in the next world. It guides one to the way of true success. Other duties and acts of worship were instituted with subsequent revelations. Once the bedrock of faith in Allah and His Messenger had been firmly established, the believers were instructed to build on their faith with acts of worship. The first duty ordained at the beginning of the Prophet's mission was Salah prayer. Jibreel taught the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him how to perform prayers and wudu ablution and asked him to offer two raka units of prayer morning and evening.